Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm glad you're here. I'm uh, just doing some work on the neck for this guitar. And before we get there, I just wanted to uh, take a minute and read you an email I received that really blew me away. It has to do with the book over here. Matthew wrote me, and here's what, what he had to say. He said, Hi, Monty. I just read past your chapter on trying new things, and I came across the email you provided. I wanted to let you know that this book, in a way, has changed my day-to-day -day life. Wow. Matthew, <laughs> I'm amazed. Thank you. Every morning was always a bit of a slog for me, but I decided to read a bit of your book every time I wake up, and it's made a huge difference. Instead of looking to my phone or other people in the morning, my first activity is to read a chapter that has a positive message. That feels amazing. I want to say thank you for writing this, and I hope all is well. As for trying something new, I think I may pick up my longboard again and have some random fun. It could be a nice break from my routines. Thanks again, Matt. Matt, delighted. I'm glad you're enjoying it. The whole idea of, of this book was because we are so busy and so wrapped up and going so fast, we need to slow down and we need a little encouragement for the journey. And that's what this book is all about. So I hope you got a copy for Thanksgiving and happy Thanksgiving to all my American friends. If you didn't, Christmas is coming. And I think if you're going to order one of these for Christmas, you better do it real soon because before you know it, it'll be gone. Now, I've got a lot to do today, and I want to tell you about where I am here, what we've done. I've just finished cutting the, the end of the neck, and I want to give you a couple of tips, and then I want to visit this little puppy over here, and I want to talk about a little more maintenance on your guitar. So what do you say we get started? Here's what we've got. What we do is we take our body and we take this like this. This is a, 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 a square that's adjustable. It's got a thumb screw over here. And you put it like that until you get it nice and flat. You then take that, let me get this out of the way, and transfer that measurement to your neck because this block is too big. So you end up taking this and putting it, actually it goes more like this, on there like so. And then you take this, once you've got your line scribed across here. Now remember, you can easily make a mistake and cut this thing going this way. It always cuts coming in. Now, let me just point that out for you here. If the guitar is cut in the wrong direction, your neck is going up like this. But here, we want it coming down. So, what do you say? We just check this again on here. And you will see that the neck, there it is. It's lined up. It's really nice and tight in the joint in the seam in here. That's going to get even tighter as we do the, the fitting of this thing later on. But that's how we end up doing this. So that's where that's going. Now you can see there's a curvature running across here. And so what I do just to get a ballpark as to where I am, I can see that down here in this area where I want to be raised up about three millimeters or centimeters, there it is there. That's looking absolutely perfect. That's where the bridge is going to go, right? So I'm very, very pleased with this. And it's, it's a delicate cut. You do it on the table saw. If you don't have one, you'll do it by hand, but you'll have to be very careful how you do it. I then take, again, the calipers that I've told you to get yourself a set. I open it up and I measured the width of this. I then took that, entered that into my iPhone, cut it in the app that's, you know, the mathematical app there, the, the uh, I don't know, whatever you call it, the addition, subtraction, division, whatever. And, and I put it in there, cut it in half, and then I set this to the halfway point so I know I'm exactly half. I check it out down here. 
I then do the, the measurement. I draw my line here. But in order to make sure that I've got it right, I just mark the tip here. Then I use this saddle square, which you can get at Lee Valley. And no, they don't sponsor me. Nobody sponsors me. <laughs> well, actually, I guess the people that buy the book sponsor me. So thank you for that. And don't forget to write the review. <laughs> anyway, uh, you take the saddle and you draw it down here. And I've got my mark coming down here, which we're going to use shortly for a center mark. Down here, I have yet to cut the uh, slot here for the trust rod. I'm not sure which trust rod I'll use. I think it's going to be this one which will go into there like so. This one's a little longer. I was dreaming all about this last night and I was thinking of going this way and putting it up to the front, but you know, this is a little too long. This on the other hand, this could work very nicely, but I'm going to use, I believe a Martin uh, peg head design on this guitar. So it, it doesn't fit with that. You know, I, I just, I don't think I'll do that. It, it's an aggravation. And there is the fingerboard. Now this is the fingerboard that I said I wasn't sure I was going to use. This is in the last video. What I did is I did some staining on the back of it because I wanted to see how it would come up. And I have checked it and it doesn't come off in your hands and it darkens up beautifully. It gives, it, it's got such nice grain that I think that stained up would look beautiful. So I think that's what I'm going to do. That will fit right there. That'll move us along a little quicker. And that's going to be there like so. And there we are. Where this cuts off here is the 14th fret. And so this is the part that goes over the body in here. So we're looking good. We're going to have to put wings on here yet. And we got more to do there. And I'll put all that together in another video for you so that you can see how we do that. And that's the way it goes. Now, let me get rid of some of this. Oh, the hands are terrible today. Um, I, I, I'm drinking too much tea, maybe. I don't know. It, it's just not good. Not good, as we say. <laughs> you know that in, in the 50s when Elvis hit the scene, it was called shake, rattle, and roll? Well, guess what? I shake, rattle, and roll. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I remember in the music scene before he arrived. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that, but it's true. By the way, I am writing another book. I got a mystery on the go. I just bumped somebody off with a long rifle uh, just the other day. That was great fun. And um, there's more coming on that. I've already written some more chapters for the second edition of this book. And you'll hear more about that in a little while. All right. As you can see, I'm very careful with the guitars that are finished. You know, when you spend so much time building a guitar, you don't want to ruin it. This is a replica of an early uh, size 2 Martin guitar from the 1865, uh, 1870, maybe 1880 era. And uh, it's, it's a walnut, as you can see here. This is just a beautiful lacquer finish on it. Just fabulous. We've got a little bit of inlay here and up here. I didn't do that. My mentor did that for me because of this kind of thing, but I did all of the shell around here and, and whatnot. And this is, this is just feeling superb. Now, let's talk about some more guitar maintenance. You know to, to humidify. Humidifying a guitar is absolutely critical. And I took this out today to humidify this, and that's why it, it triggered with me. I need to tell you a couple of other things that really you need to do. When you finish playing your guitar, get some paper towel and wipe down the strings. Okay? Just like that. Just wipe them down. Get all the oil from your fingers off the strings. They'll last a little longer. When you're changing your strings, what you need to do is you need to clean the fretboard. And there's a couple of ways to do that. Now, I use, this is a 
fingerboard oil. I got this at Stumac. You can, you can order this online. Um, I've used about half this bottle on 24, 25 guitars. And so you don't, you only need a drop or two and it will clean up and darken your fingerboard and it'll make it shine, it'll look beautiful. The other thing I do before I do any of that is I take this razor blade and sometimes I use a scalpel that I have right here. So I take these and I get right in by the frets because the frets get dirty. And, and, and the dirt from your fingers that goes onto the string sometimes transfers onto the fingerboard and bumps up against the fret. I don't like that. I don't like the look of it. Um, I, does it affect the sound? Honestly, I have no idea. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I really don't know. But it, 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 you feel better when you know it's nice and clean. So you can clean that up. Now, if you've got wear on your frets, what you can do is take some masking tape and put a piece of masking tape on either side of the fret. And then take maybe a 1000 grit black wet sandpaper, take a little piece of it and count one, two, three. See, my finger goes over and back. That's one. So do that. But if you're going to do that, to buff it and to take out any indentations or scratches that are in your frets. You're going to do it all the way along here. So you're going to end up taping this. So do that first and then oil it. Well, no, do that first. Clean, clean off anything that's there. Use your scalpel and your razor and then oil it and it will, it will look really great. Now, I also use uh, Meguiar's for the back of the guitar and for the uh, uh, neck here, the back of the neck to make sure it's clean that when you rub your hand like this, you don't feel anything but the, just the nice smooth gloss lacquer. Now, if you're a player that really wants to move quickly on the neck, and there's a lot of those, um, you might want to have a satin neck. If you want a satin neck, what you do is you do the gloss and then you take four zeros steel wool, zero, 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 yeah, four zeros steel wool, and very gently go over the back of the neck and take off the gloss so it's gone. And if you need it back, you can always buff it back. But in the meantime, just be careful coming around here. Put tape over the edge of your guitar here and here, painter's tape, so that you're not coming down into here. And, and decide if you're doing the post that's coming down here or not. But if you do that, uh, your hand will go up and down the neck faster on a satin guitar neck than it will on a gloss. And especially if your hands perspire at all and they, and they get damp a bit, they will stick to the neck. So that will help you getting up here higher and, and, and enable you to, to move up the neck or wherever you want to go with that. So that's another thing that you can do in the way of guitar maintenance, but you must keep it clean and you must humidify it. And I always use this. Every time I change the strings, I always clean the fretboard and I make, I take lots of time to do that. And it's important. So. That's about it for me. I'm going to cut out here and, and get this video posted for you today. And thank you so much for joining me and subscribing. And I appreciate all your comments. You guys are the best. Honestly, you really are terrific. I'm, I'm just grateful that you're here. So the only thing I can suggest to you at this point is to get yourself some English breakfast tea. You'll be really glad you did. You can get decaf which is what this is, because then that stops the hand shaking. Or you can get the regular and get the shake, whatever, whatever turns you on. So that's enough for me today. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to get your copy of the book. Leave a comment in, in the section down below. There are links down below to the book and to some other stuff that, that you want to check out. And by all means, I'll see you in the next video.